Well, hi there. I'm here today with Thorn, who is a caiman lizard. And in case you've never seen a caiman lizard before, they pretty much look like the ginger crocodile tegu hybrid that a wizard would create. Possibly the coolest lizard on earth. And not only is it stinking rad, but you could potentially own one. But is it the right pet lizard for you? Overall, we give the caiman lizard a score of 2.4 out of 5, which might seem pretty low, given the fact that I just told you this might be the coolest pet reptile on planet Earth. And the reason it gets that score is going to come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability, shall we? When it comes to handleability, we give them a score of 3 out of 5, and that pretty much just comes down to the fact that they're a big lizard, and big lizards are kind of hard to handle. As a big lizard goes, though, these guys are excellent. They're actually very, very similar to handling a tegu, which I think is one of the best truly big pet lizards to handle. This, this particular one, Thorn, he's still growing up. He's just sort of an adolescent right now. He's going to get considerably bigger than this kind of about the same size as an Argentine tegu, and if you've never seen the size of an Argentine tegu, we got a video all about them. You can check out Gus Gus, who actually isn't quite fully grown either, but he's getting there, and you'll see about the size that a caiman lizard will achieve, especially if it's a female. Gus Gus is about the size of an adult female caiman lizard. Adult males can get a little bit bigger than Gus Gus is in that video, but he'll get bigger. They have very, very powerful jaws, which if those ever got wrapped around you could hurt a lot, but not really that badly because their teeth are not terribly sharp. They're actually built more for breaking snail shells. And so they're more for crushing than they are for lacerating. And that's a very good thing. And they just generally aren't all that inclined to bite. So it probably won't come up. A lot like tegus, they can pass through sort of a cantankerous adolescent phase. And so if you're ever going to get bit, it's probably going to be while they're younger. And by the time that they get big enough to really hurt you, they're probably going to be sweethearts, assuming you've been working with them. They do have sharp claws. Uh, most big lizards, if you just let them climb all over you, they can end up cutting you. It's not something they're doing deliberately. It's just they're big, they're heavy, they're powerful, and their claws are sharp for climbing, and that can hurt. They're also, and you know this is very important coming from me, they're very, very unlikely to drop their tail. I think it is possible. I, I've heard instances where somebody's had their caiman lizard smack it really hard into something and it winds up breaking. So they may still have like the fissure points in the, in the tail vertebrae where the tail can break off and fall off. But generally speaking, especially given how important this tail is for their swimming, they're, they're not particularly inclined to drop it. They're probably never going to do that and that's awesome. They are, frankly, just fantastic to interact with. Fantastic in very, very similar ways to a tegu. It's like a tegu that's even less likely to hurt you. And that's marvelous, because on top of having blunt teeth, they also tend to bite fairly gingerly, because when you're a tegu, you know, you're hunting large vertebrates and things, you're running them down, chasing them down, and tegus have a very powerful feeding response. Cayman lizard, on the other hand, is eating snails. And if you've ever tried to run down a snail, you'll realize you don't have to be in any kind of a hurry. And that's the way they are about feeding, and that's lovely. When you're interacting with them, if they ever think that you smell delicious, they're going to come at you at a snail's pace. I like that. And of course, as is the case with almost any lizard, the more that you work with it, the better it's going to be. And these guys can be really, just really incredible. When it comes to care, we give the caiman lizard a score of 2 out of 5. This is a big lizard. So just to start with, any big lizard, everything is big. Big enclosure, big everything. And that tends to be big expensive and a big job to maintain. When it comes to a caiman lizard, they take that to a whole other level. That other level is the water. Caiman lizards, in addition to living on land and being up and sunbathing like a normal big lizard, they also spend a good chunk of their life in the water like a crocodile, because this is a crocodile tegu made by a wizard. And because they live in the water a lot of their life, you've got to maintain a colossal aquarium. And if you've never kept an aquarium before, 
It's a big job, and this is a big, big, big aquarium with a big lizard that makes big messes in it. And that is a huge amount of work, and probably the worst thing about keeping a caiman lizard. Like any big lizard, they're going to need a big basking spot. That's going to mean a lot of big bulbs. And on top of that, they need UVB. And so UVB doesn't travel a long way and you need it over a large basking area. So you're going to need a lot of these and that's just very, very expensive. You also have to keep humidity right. That's not that hard to do because you're going to have a giant aquarium in the enclosure that is preferably heated. And so that's going to be letting off a lot of humidity, but you do have to make sure that your humidity levels are correct for this lizard. And that can be work. On top of that, feeding can be difficult. In the wild, these guys, as their staple, are eating snails. They will eat other things as well, but snails are the bulk of their diet. And some of them are very difficult to get eating anything but snails, especially if you get a wild caught or imported lizard. And so getting them switched over and onto things that you can get, that can be hard. And you are going to need to get some snails. And there are commercially available snails that you can get. We've got links to those down in the description. On top of that, if you live near, say, like an Asian market, they may have snails, but you've got to be very careful about where you get your snails because snails can carry a lot of nasty diseases. So you don't want to just be pulling snails out of your backyard or something. Even if you breed your own snails, you're going to want to breed them for a few generations to make sure that all the parasites will be out of them. And speaking of parasites, this is another major care issue that you're going to run into with caiman lizards because most caiman lizards that you're going to have access to are not captive bred locally. They're actually being farmed, sort of like what we talked about with green iguanas. If you haven't seen that video, so link to it right there. But most of them are being farmed, which means they're being kept outdoors, essentially like wild caiman lizards. And because of that, they're exposed to all the wild parasites. And when they're shipped to wherever you are, they're gonna be emaciated, they're gonna be cold, they're gonna be dehydrated, and then those Parasites are going to be having a heyday. During the first few months that you have them, there's going to be a very, very good chance that your caiman lizard could spontaneously up and die. And there are signs to watch out for, so be on the lookout if they have a reduced appetite, uh, if they're not coming out to bask and just hiding all day. These can be indicators that you've got a parasite problem and you need to go to the vet right away. But if you are buying a caiman lizard, there's a very, very good chance you're going to need to make some vet trips to make sure that all those parasites are cleaned out and that's a huge deal. Mostly, I mean, there are these three really hard things about care. One of them is that if you don't get a captive bred individual, you're gonna have issues with parasites and that can be serious. On top of that, you have to keep an enormous aquarium and feeding can be a little difficult. And those are really the things that make caiman lizard more challenging than other similarly sized lizards. That's why they don't get a very high score for care. When it comes to hardiness, we give the caiman lizard a score of three out of five. Like I've already said, imports are going to be in bad shape, generally speaking, when they get here. And most caiman lizards that are available are imports. So I would recommend, if you can help it, get a captive bred individual. They're like gold to find, but they're also worth their weight in gold when you do find one. So get one, get a captive bred one. If you're going to get one, that would be my recommendation. If not, be prepared to go to the vet and go to the vet often and make sure that that caiman lizard is healthy because otherwise you're gonna have real problems. If you get a captive bred caiman lizard and provide an appropriate enclosure and proper diet, it's gonna be a pretty solid lizard for you. Just be careful about things like skin infections and things because they are in a very humid, very moist environment. Also, respiratory infections, just things that are fairly typical of lizards that you need to watch out for. When it comes to availability, we give the caiman lizard a score of two out of five. Frankly, uh, farm-raised babies are fairly common. It's not like you're going to see them in pet stores, generally speaking. You're going to have to look online even to find a farm-raised baby. But, like I already said, captive-bred babies are extremely difficult to find. And that's why they get a pretty low score for availability. And, as we've already said, farm-raised babies, they're available. They're still expensive and they're very likely to crash on you, mostly because of parasites and just the stresses of being transported. And so, if you can help it, don't go that route. Get captive bred. I know it's hard to find. Wait for it. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the caiman lizard a score of 2 out of 5. Caiman lizards, even farm-raised babies, are expensive on their own. Uh, if you get a captive bred baby, it's going to be astronomically expensive, but worth every penny. But the cost of the lizard, that's really only the beginning. 
And that's why I'm saying don't skimp on the lizard because that enclosure is going to cost so much money uh, on top of all the lights and just the normal terrestrial lizard stuff that you're going to need, basking areas and, and just a huge enclosure in general. That huge enormous in aquarium with filters and heaters, that's going to cost a fortune and it costs quite a bit even to maintain it. The enclosure for a caiman lizard is so very expensive, so don't worry about the cost of the lizard. If a caiman lizard is right for you, money is not your problem. Overall, again, we give the caiman lizard a score of 2.4 out of 5, which I know seems low, but hopefully by now you understand that there are some serious drawbacks to owning a caiman lizard, but at the same time you get one of the coolest pet lizards in the world, so if you can swing it, maybe it's worth it. They are going to cost you a lot of time, a lot of space, and a lot of treasure. It's probably one of the most expensive lizards I will ever recommend. But if you are like having problems spending all your money, like if you just get so much money and you're like, I don't even know what to do with all this money I have, a caiman lizard might be the perfect pet reptile for you. As always, like and subscribe to our channel, but if you want to see more of Thorn, you gotta check out his channel as well. You can find him on Instagram, also on YouTube under The Reptile Project. And there are just all kinds of cool videos, mostly starring Thorn here. And he is so rad. I'm so happy with this guy. Like I said, he's still growing up. And so you guys will kind of get to watch him grow up, watch him get bigger. In the future, we'll probably have more videos with him as well. Because he's a stud and so are his owners. They're just great people. So. We hope to see a lot more of Thorn in the future. We hope to see a lot more of you. We hope to see you real soon. Hardiness. Oh, Nerd's wrong hand. An overall score of two, sorry. An overall score of 2.4. We give the Cayman Lizard a total score of 2.4. Where is it? Got rid of it. Five. <laughs> <laughs> overall. All right, you ready, Thorn? All right, Thorn, you're a good dude. Bienvenidos. Hoy día estamos hablando be del lagarto queimán. So <laughs> este es lagartija queimán. Okay. Uh, 